So change within an organization. I like the way that Michael talked about his organization when he came in. It had, an, it had two acting IGs. It had been over two years. Enter the second acting IG for the Department of Energy. Been in place for two years. We've had acting IGs for over three years. Change. You can't be afraid to make change within an organization. If you're an acting IG and you say to your staff as they're sitting there talking to you about some of the things that you would like to do within the organization and you say, let's just wait for the new IG. How many of you have heard that? Let's just wait for the new IG. What happens to the room? The oxygen literally will be sucked out of that room. What kind of credibility are you going to have as a leader if you say to your people, follow me, here's our vision, here's what we're going to do, but wait for the new IG. But I realize it can be risky. And you could say, change, what are those things? How do you know how to change? What are you going to do? Change is long term. Why do you start something? A new person may not want to do it. What's going to happen? Then you're going to just start and stop and start and stop. So what happens in some organizations? They don't do anything. Well, let's just wait. And what does that do for an organization? You slide backwards. And at the very least, you'll be status quo. But at the same time, the organizations that we are doing the audits, inspection, and investigations on, they're evolving. They're changing. And even if you're the best-run IG organization, you need to evolve and change along with that. But is change as easy as just pressing the easy button? I wish it was. It's a nice, pretty button up there. It'd be nice to be able to push it and say, change. No, it takes strategy. It takes putting together an assessment. It takes uh, communication. It takes a number of aspects to change. And I'm just going to share some of the aspects of what we undertook when I became the acting IG almost two years ago. And it was really the thanks to my senior leadership team and the supervisors within this organization, because no one person can do this. It's a team effort in order to get this done. Well, let me show you a graphic. Everyone wants to come to work. All your employees want to come to work, and they want to do the right thing. And here you can see in this, these people are working hard. And that's what employees want to do. They want to come in, and they want to work hard. But do you think this makes for a good organization? And I'm not going to say who's in the middle there. But I got a little bit of a hunch who might be in the middle. You think that makes for a good organization? Yeah? But everybody's working hard. And that's the key, because everyone on your staff does want to work hard. And they do come in. They come into the organization to work hard every day. But this probably needs a little bit of uh, assistance in which way we really want to go. But within, when I took over, we, we also, as some of you have been talking about, we were siloed. And in some instances, siloed on purpose. We had our Office of Audits and Inspections and Investigations, General Counsel's Office, or I should say the Counsel to the IG's Office, along with our management and administration. And in some ways, they were not communicating. And on, as I said, in some instances, for some senior leaders and some managers, uh, there were uh, firewalls put up on purpose for some reason. And when I became acting, one of the, the things I did, before I even assumed a responsibility but knew I was going to be, is I went on a listening tour a listening tour within the department. I was fortunate it came on at a point in which the prior administration was still there and they were getting ready to leave. So I had uh, an opportunity to hear without any sort of ramifications from people saying about the, the IG's office. I asked three major questions. I asked, is the IG value added to the department? Is the IG doing the right work? And to our employees, I added a third. Are we an awesome place for our employees to work? And if you change that around, you can say, how do we know that we're value added? How do we know we're doing the right work? And how do we know that we're an awesome place for our employees to work? Those are three keys. But you have to be able to ask yourself, how do you know that? Well, we, we do audits. See what's on our website. Ooh, we do inspections. See what's on our website. We've got some good Department of Justice press releases for our criminal investigations. Our counsel's office is advising, and in management administration, we're doing those year-end appraisals. All of you are into year-end appraisals. Yes, it's that year-end, doing your appraisals. But were we doing it in the way that was the most productive 
and adding, as I say, that value. We had, we had, had uh, an IG that had been in place, many of you know, Greg Friedman, for over 20 years. And it was great. He brought a lot of knowledge and experience to the organization. But when you have that, you also have, in some ways, models that have been around for almost 20 years, while the organization itself, that our Department of Energy, was evolving. So you have to ask yourself, how do we evolve from these silos? So one of the things that we did is we took all the senior leaders and we went off to an offsite. First month I was acting, we all went off for three days, sequestered in a room, and we put post-its up on walls. We talked about changes that we wanted to do. We talked about all sorts of things that were going on. And we left that day realizing we didn't need to make changes. And we did have some very serious issues in the organization that we needed to work. But we also realized we need a framework in order to be able to do it. You can't just scattergram, well, let's do this, and let's do that, and let's do this. You're going to be flavor of the month. And you need a plan. You need a plan that will stand through, not only time is acting, but a plan that will stand through so when the new person does come on, by the way, we're on our second nominee in three years. Hopefully, we'll get through the Senate shortly. It will stand the test of time, so you need a well thought out, put together framework. We realized as a senior leadership team, we needed to work on ourselves first. And the number one thing that went through all those post-its on the wall was we needed to improve communication in the organization. Communication, both organizational communication, but communication that was also interpersonal communication. We needed to ensure people had the tools to be able to raise issues, and we needed to have the tools to be receptive in order to act on those issues that were being raised. And we knew, to, we knew that we needed some outside help on this. And so we used a consulting firm that uses the model of uh, the speed of trust. And that gave us the framework, which we then took fiscal year 18. We tried to take one initiative that we knew needed to be worked on while we were accomplishing our strategic assessment. Because we started to take down the framework of a strategic assessment of which we knew we needed to work on one item. And that was communication as we were going down that initiative. So don't wait. Don't wait until you have everything in a pretty picture when you know there's some fundamentals, such as communication for us, that needed to be fixed. It needed to be improved upon. And we're still working on it. It isn't just one training session that does it. It is day in and day out actively working. We also realized as we were undertaking this strategic assessment, we weren't very strategic. There are three parts to an organization. Strategic, senior leadership team. Operational, it's your supervisors and managers. And tactical. And you know, if you take all the Lowe's posts that I talked about we had around the room, the vast majority were in the operational and tactical area. We, as an organization, had been living, our senior leaders had been living in the operational level. We were down in the weeds with our employees. And that became a huge trust tax for our supervisors, because it made it seem as though we didn't trust what they were doing, because we were right down there with them. Well, come on, guys, senior leaders, you got to be up at the, you got to be up at the strategic level. And we learned that. And that's part of what we were working through with our strategic assessment, was to move up to that strategic level, let our supervisors supervise, let our team leads be team leads. And, oh, by the way, in all of that, there was an organizational issue that, we, that was a must that had to be addressed by our organization before we completed the strategic assessment. And that was we had to better define the roles and responsibilities in our Office of Investigations. Something that the organization knew it needed to do, but it was the, let's put it on the shelf and wait for the new IG. They may or may not agree. Well, here we are two years later, three years later without one. Last year, what we made the decision on going into this fiscal year is our ASACs were non-supervisory. And we realized in order to execute this, to really have the operations being done by the supervisors, the ASACs needed to be supervisors. We undertook a study, and we, be, we made the decision for them to be supervisors. That's just one example. The communication initiative is one, and making this organizational adjustment is another that we had to do 
while we are undertaking the strategic assessment. I talked about our model that we use within the uh, speed of trust. These were things in which we needed to clarify our intent, make sure we were res uh, results driven, integrity that really goes without saying. We needed to work on our character and on our competence. And all of these have various tools that we needed to work. We also reorganized some of the functions within our Office of Audits and Inspections, which we're right now in the process of working through. So all of this is really to say, in the end, the, the moral of the story, you can be an acting IG, you can be a permanent IG. You can, you can be in an organization, and when you're in charge, you need to be in charge. You can't wait. You can't sit back and say, let it be someone else. Because the organization is there and the organization needs leadership. Even if you're the best run organization, you still need leadership. You need to listen to employees and not be defensive because you're going to hear things you may not like and things that you may say, I didn't know the organization did that. I'm really sorry. That's not our intent. What our intent is, is to do and then fill in the blank. That's what, that's what needs to be done. And when you start doing that with employees, it's amazing how much they will start to tell you and how much they will start to share with you. So remember that chart, strategic, operational, tactical? The tactical level is the people that are turning out the work. And you need to listen to them to find out what's going on and what you can do to remove those impediments to their work. Again, don't worry about the new IG coming in. It's going to happen. It's great. We got a nominee sitting at the Senate. Hope she comes in any day. Because we've put through well thought through decisions and have a well thought through plan with our strategic assessment. It will stand the test of time and will stand multiple com people coming in as IG. That's the goal. It isn't person oriented. I could come up here too and talk about our strategic assessment and how we did it and that's a different conversation. What today was about is sharing. Take a risk. Listen to your staff. Communicate. Have full transparency. Make some of those decisions that need to be made immediately while you're working through your strategic assessment. And you can say, um, how has our success been? Well, we're working through that. In some areas with our latest Federal Employee Viewpoint Survey, we increased 30 to 40 percent. In some areas, we dipped down. And we say, OK, that's how change comes about. Sometimes we are going to. Sometimes we are going to have an issue. And that's OK. It isn't all roses. And you say, that's all right. We're going to address those issues. Lastly, entrust your employees to make decisions appropriate for the level of the organization. And you notice I use the word entrust. People have to feel not only that you have the confidence in them, but you have the trust in them. And isn't this a better organization than the one you saw that people were pulling everybody apart? I like that one, too, because I'm sitting in the back with the stocking cap on with the Dalmatian next to me. Yeah. That's what I like about that one, not the one that's in the middle. But that's really what can come of it, because people really do want to come to work and do a good job. And our job as senior leaders is to ensure that they have the environment, the tools, and the resources to maximize their potential, because maximizing their potential really maximizes the potential of the organization. Thank you all.